Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, OP Naruto got harem with Ino, Anko, Kuranai and Tamari, part 1. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Random Hobo, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Douglas firmly resting on his forehead, Naruto looked for something to occupy his time. Nearly anything would do at this point, really. He had been tiredly waiting for nearly an hour, and goddammit if he wasn't bored. The nine-year-old blonde pounded his head against the school desk silently, as he continued to wait for the arrival of Mizuki-sensei or Ruka sensei This is Suo, he grumbled to himself. Next to him, a raven-haired boy silently agreed. Ichiha Sasuke had to admit that the dope next to him had gotten something right for once. I don't need a history lesson, I need to get stronger to beat him. He has already graduated by this age. Behind him, Yamanaka Ino and Haruno Sakura glared at the orange-clad boy with an intense color war. He actually had the audacity to take the spot right next to their beloved object of infatuation. Naruto was well aware of the blatant killing intent stemming from behind him. It wasn't that hard to pick up, regardless, even if there was subtle killing intent, he would have been aware, simply because his instincts were now hung to the point where he could sense nearly every immediate hostile intent, no matter how insignificant, aimed towards him. However, Sakura and Ino's intent were more irritated, rather than the murderous vibe he got from some of the villagers, so he simply ignored it. The worst he would get would probably be a fist to the head from the two fangirls. But he had experienced worse. Much worse. Sighing, the whiskered boy looked to his left at the young Ichiha. Why is this guy always brooding? He acts as if his clan was killed by his brother or some shit. Despite this thought, Naruto knew that the Ichiha clan was currently thriving and well alive. He also knew that Sasuke was butthurt because he wasn't as good as his older brother. And how did our young protagonist know? Easy, he knew Itachi on a personal level. When they first encountered each other, they understood each other well enough to form a sense of camaraderie. Itachi was well aware of the lone boy's pain, and Naruto saw something within the older Uchiha that set him apart from the rest of his clan. Initially, Naruto felt a bit guilty that he was stealing Sasuke's bond with his brother, but as soon as Naruto found out about the giant dildo up Sasuke's ass, he sure galled the guilt off. Naruto thought back to when he first met the older Itachi. Flashback start, Naruto was silent as he stared at the ceiling of the Hokage's office, a whiskered face of intense contemplation in place. This particular day was a day where Naruto's usual exuberance was diminished. He sighed. The blonde knew this was for his best interest, but that didn't mean he had to like it. Still, he would rather be here than out there. Sir Toby hears and observed the blonde, and frowned. He wished there was some other way to handle the situation, but this was the best possible solution for his surrogate grandson. He had to keep the young with him to ensure his safety. After all, if past experiences were anything to go by, the levels of danger were at its peak for the boy at this time of year. What unfortunate luck to be conceived on this day. The Sandame Hokage gave a wary and annoyed sigh as his duty as the village leader prevented him from actually doing anything more in terms of providing any sense of normalcy for the child's birthday. The only thing that was normal about Naruto's birthday was the present that only he, the Sandame, would give to him. Yurei of course sent him money, but Hiruzen didn't yet explain to Naruto as to who was funding him. He didn't want to let Naruto know about his godfather acting very well, not godfather-like. How was a village leader supposed to explain to a child that his godfather couldn't be there for him because of said village leader's orders? The spy network provided by Jureya was invaluable and was crucial to the village's safety. This year Hiruzen gave the boy a set of practice kunai and shuriken. It was all much duller than the actual versions of the items, but needless to say, Naruto loved it. Naruto suddenly groaned. Jiji, I'm bored. Can we go somewhere? The now 8-year-old boy exclaimed. Hiruzen gave a sad smile. Naruto-kun, you know why I can't let you go out, but I don't know why. All I know is that the people will hurt me on my birthday, but I don't know why they do it. Naruto scowled as he interrupted his grandfather figure. Sir Toby's smile turned into a frown. Knowing only one thing that could placate the boy, the aged Hokage set aside his paperwork and stood up. Alright, fine, Naruto-kun. We can go out today since it's your birthday. I'll even treat you to some Ichirakus. Does that sound good? Yada. In an instant Naruto was standing up and enthusiastically pumping his little fist in the air. Hiruzen chuckled. Alright, get your stuff, and we can head out as soon as you're ready. Suddenly, Hiruzen's assistant, Mew, could be heard from the now slightly open door. Okage-sama, pardon the intrusion, but the council wanted to speak to you about some urgent matter. Hiruzen frowned. Tell them I'm busy today. Sandame gave a good-natured smile to the blonde. After all, I have an important matter to attend to. Naruto beamed at the Hokage and latched onto the old man's robe. Hiruzen returned this affectionate gesture with several gentle and affectionate head taps. Mew's next words were a bit hesitant. Are you sure Hokage-sama? The matter is regarding possible intrusion of Orochimaru. Say no more. I'll be there, Sandame interrupted rather sternly. At those words, Naruto's heart shattered as the boy's shoulders slumped depressingly. 
Tears threatened to spill as he bit his lips to keep himself from crying. Failing miserably, Asande knelt down to the boy's eye level. I am so sorry, Naruto-kun. If I could, I would retire right now for you, but the village really needs me. You understand, don't you? Despite feeling slightly betrayed, Naruto nodded glumly. Harizen stood up, and frowned. If only someone else could oh. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like Itachi came back. He felt the presence of one of the most prodigal shinobis coming in. Harizen then turned to the crying, and knelt once again. Naruto-kun, I promise I'll make it up to you, but in the meantime this will have to do, okay? Naruto looked confused as he looked up to Sandame's eyes with slightly blurred vision. Before he could ask, sounds of clothes rustling, and movement resounded from behind him. Bamboo Captain Kamitachi, Weasel, Mission Reporting Mission Number 3041. Status. Success, a sudden monotonous voice said. Ah, Kamitachi-kun, that is good to hear. However, I now have another mission that only you can accomplish. Do you accept it? Hiruzen spoke with a smile. Realizing what the old Jiji was doing, Naruto giggled. Ignoring the laugh and presence of the young boy, Itachi straightened up and bowed. Yes, Hokage-sama. He knew it mattered not what kind of mission it was. If it was perilous, and he needed to risk his life to complete it, he would do it in a heartbeat for his village. He would be a weapon of Konoha. He would be the Hokage's tool. He would be an instrument whose sole purpose was to do as asked, and kill if necessary. Air babysitting Naruto Kunhir Sanin quickly coughed out. He would be Konoha's most accomplished babysitter. Wait, what? Naruto gave a cheerful wave, and snickered. Flashback end, of course, the knowledge of him, and Itachi being friends, was a secret to everyone but Naruto, the Hokage, and Itachi himself. Well, at least Naruto considered him a friend. An older brother even. Dope, Sasuke said, pulling Naruto from his thoughts. Team retorted to the young demon container. Naruto glanced at his raven-haired classmate when he didn't respond. What the hell, why did he even talk to me? Naruto frowned. Whatever, I'm just gonna ignore him. Sasuke, noticing the attention of the blonde was elsewhere frowned, everyone should be paying the utmost attention to an Ichiha when one speaks to them. In an irritated voice, he spoke once more, Dobe. Naruto sighed, and continued to ignore him. I wonder what time we can get out of class I want some ramen. Oi, Dobe. I'm talking to you. Sasuke was practically seething at being ignored. He was an Ichiha. Someone of his prestigious caliber should ever be ignored. What the hell do you want, team? Sasuke smirked, and Ichiha would always get his way. It was in their divine right. HN. I don't know what you're talking about. An Ichiha like myself would never address you first unless we were ordered by the Hokage himself, and even then, the sliding of the classroom door interrupted Sasuke's self-pretentious speech. A random person came in. Attention class. Iruka sensei and Mizuki sensei will be unable to come to class today due to unseemly circumstances, therefore class will be cancelled for today. Naruto grinned as a cheer erupted throughout the class. He knew that it was the reason for them not showing up, oh he knew all too well. After all, he was the prankster king for a reason. Naruto drummed his fingers against the countertop at his favorite little restaurant as he waited impatiently. Man, it sure is taking him a long ass time. I wonder what the holdup is. Bored, Naruto looked at everything around him, noticing every little detail before his eyes rested on one 14-year-old dame. He studied everything about her, her long brown hair underneath her white bandana, her fair skin while she worked, and then looked at her dark brown eyes. They were staring directly back at him. Naruto froze, instantly realizing he had been caught gazing at her. Instead of scowling or getting angry, Aim simply giggled. Don't worry, Naruto-kun, your ramen is almost done. You don't have to stare at me for much longer, she finished with a teasing tone. Naruto turned tomato red as he sputtered out, WW well, I, I mean I I didn't mean I'm not a pervert. He finally ended up screaming. A man's voice suddenly entered the verbal fray. Are you perving on my daughter Naruto? He yelled in fake anger, but Naruto didn't properly perceive it. Instantly recognizing the voice as Tuchi, Aim's father, Naruto's visage became horrified. Oi, Tuchi Oji-san, I'm not a pervert. I mean, yeah, she's pretty, and stuff, but I'm only 9 years old. Oh, so you do think I'm pretty? Aim teased with a victorious smirk. For the second time since he entered the ramen stand his cheeks felt blood rush through them as he tried coming up with an excuse. I, I didn't mean it all like that, Mi-chan. He cried out. Aim pouted as fake tears brimmed at the edge of her eyes. So I'm ugly then. Tuchi smirked as Naruto pointed a finger at him. Look what you did, Oji-san. Your daughter is crying, and it's all your fault. He then turned his attention to the pseudo-crying girl. Aim Ni chan don't cry. You're one of the prettiest girls I know. Aim's demeanor did a complete 180 as she ran around the counter, and engulfed the young blonde in a choking embrace. Aw, oh, Naruto-kun. If only you were a bit older, I would nab you all for myself. I can't breathe. A blue-faced Naruto managed to choke out. Whoops, sorry Naruto-kun. Aim giggled as she let go of the sputtering while he breathed in as much air as possible. Tuchi chuckled at the children's antics. Naruto was always brightening the mood around here. The movement of the flaps of the restaurant indicating another customer had entered, brought all their attention to the newcomer. 
In unison, Aim and Tucci spoke with smiles on their faces. Welcome to Ichiraku Ramen. Why were you so late, Nai-san? Naruto screamed at the new rival with a fierce glare. Aim and Tucci bopped the young on the head. Naruto, that's no way to treat a guest of our restaurant. We thought you knew better than that. Before Naruto could defend himself the customer sat down and patted the young blonde on the head. Itachi held his other free hand up as a gesture to calm their scolding. It's fine. I was a bit late after all, isn't that right Naruto-kun? Naruto pouted with his eyes squinted shut and arms definitely crossed. HMPH. Team Nai-san was supposed to be here when I first got here. Itachi sighed and flicked him on the forehead. Naruto-kun, what did I tell you about calling me that? Ow? Naruto rubbed his forehead soothingly before turning his squinty scowl at Ichiha. And I can't help it. Your time's older brother, and you were late. I think it's fair for Yachu Team Nai-san for one day. Huff Naruto. Aim and Tuchi looked at each other before shrugging. Oh we'll let you guys get reacquainted. We need to finish preparing the ramen. Did you want anything sir? Aim asked politely. I'll just take a vegetable ramen Itachi started off. Screw that. Get him some Maizo ramen, Aim Ni Chan. Naruto interrupted. He looked at Itachi with a desperate look. Oh come on, Itachi Nai, you have to at least try the best stuff for your first time. Naruto begged. Itachi chuckled before he looked at Aim and nodded in confirmation. I'll take one Maizo ramen then. When she left, he patted Naruto on the head. So no more Team Nai-san. Hmm. Naruto grinned. I guess you earned yourself a break. The rest of their lunch went by without incident, as Itachi listened to Naruto talk about his day. When the subject approached the topic of the academy, the demon container then turned to Itachi. Hey, how come your little brother is such a punk-ass big cow? Standing over him was a smiling Aim, who had evidently slammed a giant ladle on the blonde's head. You were saying something, Naruto-kun. She said almost too sweetly. I was saying, why is your brother such a sweet little angel? Itachi's mouth twitched in amusement as Aim nodded in approval. Suddenly the sounds of the stand's flaps blowing announced another customer, and, without warning, Naruto was pushed off his seat. Don't call me an angel, Dobe. Itachi internally groaned. Of course his actual little brother had to show up. Naruto angrily started to get up in order to retaliate, but Itachi held him back with a gentle grasp on his shoulder. Naruto simply sighed and ignored the younger Chiha before he turned to the older one. Alright, Itachi and Naruto froze as he caught his verbal slip, oh crap he winced internally. Of course his freaking slip of tongue had to be in front of Sasuke. Oh Kami, he's gonna freak. Sasuke glared at Naruto. What did you just call him, Dobe? Nothing, Naruto quickly retorted. Sasuke gritted his teeth. If he was about to say what I think he was about to say, Itachi quickly stood in between the two younger occupants of the restaurant. He turned to his younger brother in blood. Sasuke-kun, what is the issue here? Did you come looking for me or did you come simply to antagonize your friend here? Naruto scoffed at the term friend. Sasuke seemed to agree with Naruto as he glared at his older brother. Nai-san, why are you hanging with Cretan that is beneath our clan name? Especially this stove. Itachi frowned, you should never address another person like Sasuke-kun, please refrain from doing so again. The elder Chi had gestured to the blonde blonde, Naruto-kun here is a very good friend of mine. Sasuke scowled. Whatever, Tusama wishes for your presence. Itachi nodded. Alright, Sasuke-kun, go on ahead without me. I'll be home shortly. He mentally scowled. Must be another meeting on the coup d'etat it looks like the time is approaching. Hey Chen. Came the reply of the young Ichiha as he turned around to leave. Naruto scowled at Sasuke's back as he left. He shook his head and turned to the remaining Ichiha. I don't see how the two of you are related. Itachi chuckled and brought out enough money to cover both tabs. He flicked Naruto's forehead and the blonde yelled in pain, making Itachi chuckle even more as he left the padding there. But he didn't even get to try ramen. Once Naruto finished eating he thanked Aim and Tuchi before leaving. Deciding to get some good all training in, he started heading over to the training grounds. Using the alleyways and shortcuts to his advantage, he swiftly navigated the passages while achieving his desired intention of avoiding people. It would do him no good to run into anyone when he was alone. They didn't really do anything to him in broad daylight, but the occasional villager or shinobi would gain the courage to throw something at him. That included tomatoes and rotten food as he recently found out. Other times it would be more lethal. Naruto kept quiet and stealthily walked to training grounds 43 when he knew that was always empty. He didn't really know any reasons why, although he suspected it had something to do with training ground 44, making weird feral and animalistic noises. Oh well, as long as it keeps people away from me it's fine he thought as he headed towards his intended training grounds. I wonder if that weird youthful guy is gonna be around. Naruto frowned as he recalled the memories of the strange exuberant man. Oddly, the only thing he could recall is the words that the man kept shouting out with every punch and kick. Youth. Youth. Naruto cringed as the image of a green spandex man punching and screaming at the top of his lungs about youth assaulted his mind. Shuddering at the thought of him, Naruto never ever wanted to be near that guy, unless it was for shinobi purposes maybe. Despite his eager tendencies, Naruto knew the man was pretty strong at the very least. 
He was working out like a madman without tiring every time Naruto saw or heard him. The caterpillar man would have several boulders attached to him while he did whatever exercise. Whether the exercise be running up walls or impossibly steep cliffs or ravines, a man always did it in extreme way. Either attach multiple huge boulders to weigh him down, or sprint up only on two fingers. No weak man would ever do that. Anyway, Naruto decided that since no one else would take the time of the day to teach him, he'd learn on his own. He looked at various shinobi training, and tried to copy what they did. Of course, this was all done discreetly for obvious reasons. And that was how Naruto trained everything well, everything that wasn't chakra based. Naruto couldn't do shit with his chakra, and it absolutely irritated and puzzled him to no end, even though they had just unlocked theirs this year like every other year 4 academy students would. It was sort of a rite of passage he suppose, at least that's what Shiji told him. However, surprisingly, when Naruto unlocked his chakra everyone in a half mile radius passed out, himself included. The Hokage was there when he woke up, and tried to explain everything to everyone about what happened. He said, Naruto-kun has too much chakra, and the density of it was blah blah blah. Naruto didn't really pay attention because firstly, unlocking your chakra was painful as hell, and he was super exhausted after he regained consciousness, and secondly, when did he pay attention to anything important? Never. That's when. Although he made a mental note to fix that issue soon. Suddenly, a scream broke Naruto's train of thought. Yo youth. 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 Okami, he's close, Naruto mentally grimaced. He trudged towards the source of exuberance after some deep contemplation. It took a few moments, but with some common sense, and a powerful need, and wanting to get stronger, he reluctantly decided to go study the strange man. The enthusiastic screams of passion grew even louder until he finally arrived hidden in the dense forest. Well, he was here now. For better or for worse, not even he knew. Okay, first he ran laps no wait, did he stretch first? Well, no shit he stretched first. Everyone stretches first. Okay so let's restart stretching first, laps, the basic push-ups and shit, then the advanced and crazy weird push-ups and shit, and then Naruto paused for a moment with a puzzled expression. Damn it. What the hell did he do again? I can't concentrate right now next to the Simu tip. Naruto glanced at the raven-haired boy next to him who was currently glaring at him. It had been like this ever since that incident at Ichirakus. As soon as Naruto was within a 200 feet radius of Sasuke, the young Ichiha would find him and try to burn holes into the young blonde's very being. It was pretty uncanny actually, it would have been a pretty impressive feat of determination if it wasn't so creepy. Like, seriously. A wall could be separating the two, and as soon as Naruto walked around the corner, Sasuke's duck ass head would be fully rotated to glare at him, while his upper torso was facing a completely different direction. Seriously. What? The. Fuck. And to make things worse, wherever Naruto sat, Sasuke would sit right freaking next to him. Team, I'm flattered, and all, but I don't play for that team, so, uh, if you could kindly get away from me that'd be splendid. Sasuke blushing from embarrassment while the girls glared at the whiskered boy for implying something that would put all of their efforts down the drain. The guys on the other hand loved it. Kiba was practically howling with laughter, while Choji chuckled. Chikamaru muttered a quick troublesome while having the faintest grin. Shino seemed to be impassive, but the shuddering of his chest and shoulders indicated silent laughter. I am not gay, dope. Sasuke hissed. Then why the hell do you keep staring at me, and keep sitting near me? For the whole week on top of that. Naruto challenged. Stating these facts aloud seemed to have brought a heart-stopping realization to the girls who worshipped the young Ichiha. Many of the young females, including Ino and Sakura, looked at each other with worry, and a hint of panic in their eyes. Why was Sasuke doing all those things? Naruto smirked at Sasuke who just gritted his teeth. He didn't really want to explain that he was jealous of Naruto's bond with his older brother, along with wanting an explanation on how and why they were closer than Itachi and himself, his actual brother. Naruto continued smirking at the black-haired boy which seemed to piss him off even more. Oh man, I love moments like these. Naruto was brought out of his thoughts when he heard something whizzing towards him. On instinct honed from all his life, he ducked and saw an eraser fly over his head hitting the desk behind him. Naruto. Bartruka, obviously the person who had thrown the object at him. What was that for, Iruka-sensei? Naruto yelped. Iruka frowned. That was for not paying attention. Naruto looked incredulous. What? Are you serious of all people? Mio, for Kami's sake look at the emo bastard next to me. He's been staring at me for the past few days. Not to mention he's been staring out the goddamned window for the past century, and you didn't throw anything at him. Iruka looked thoughtful as he conceded a bit. Well I suppose. Too bad, Naruto was on a roll now. And look at the two bimbos behind me. All they do is stare at Sir Emo ass, he jerked a thumb towards a still glaring Sasuke and you don't ever see them getting something thrown at them. Sakura and Ino didn't even hear him as they continued their dreamlike stare at the raven haired boy, apparently having quelled the question of Sasuke's sexuality from their minds. Naruto then pointed to a sleeping Shikamaru. And this guy. He's literally slept in every class since day one. At this point, everyone was staring at Naruto and all, including Iruka, with one similar thought on their mind. When did the dope notice all these things? 
Naruto then turned his attention to Kiba, who was now clearly outside the classroom window playing with Akamaru. He's not even in class. Need I say more? Naruto looked outside with confusion on his face. What the hell when did he get Kiba? Get your ass back in here. Kiba clicked his tongue in annoyance before he climbed back through the window, albeit begrudgingly. Naruto then glanced at Hinata, contemplating whether or not to expose her for her similar fangirl-like endeavors towards himself. Hinata, who thought she was next on the target list, ducked her head with a furious blush. The blonde seemed to have changed his mind about calling her out on her weird stalking habit, and resumed his rant. And look at Choji what in the actual fuck. Look at him. He has a damn grill in front of him with meat on it, and you're gonna call me out. Choji blatantly ignored everyone as he threw some more meat on the grill. Everyone sweat dropped at the sight. Aruka looked defeated. Alright, alright, I'm sorry, Naruto, and thank you for bringing this to my attention, now everyone that was mentioned has detention. This set off a set of reactions, none that Aruka was hoping for. Sakura and Ino squealed at the prospect of spending more time with their precious Sasuke kun. Shikamaru didn't care since he was just gonna sleep that time away anyway. Choji shrugged. He'd just eat more of the snacks he carried to pass the time. Kiba didn't care much. He had just received Akamaru from his clan, and wanted to bond with the little dog as much as possible. Since they were now official partners, detention would be fully, and gladly spent with his new bud. Sasuke, however, was a different story. The young prodigy seethed at the blue-eyed blonde boy with evident rage. Dope, look what you've done. Naruto was about to retort when he felt two separate fists collide with the back of head, along with the shout of Sasuke's two number one fans. Yeah, idiot, look what you've done. They yelled in unison. Ow. Sakura-chan, Ino-chan, that hurt. Naruto whined as he nursed the back of his head. Sakura, and Ino huffed as one. That's what you get for getting us all in trouble. Not that we mind both girls added in a silent afterthought. Whatever, Naruto mumbled. Uruka pouted with comical tears streaming down his face. Man. I don't think it would even matter if you brats had detention or not. It's not like it's gonna change anything. So luckily for you guys, detention is cancelled, but seriously, back in my day. Uruka then went on to rambling on about today's generation needing to discipline themselves until the dismissal bell rang. Without any hesitation, Naruto darted out the room quickly with a scowl on his face. He had had enough of the people in the classroom, and the bullshit. Naruto kicked at the ground as he walked along the village. He kept his gaze down, and ignored the villagers' open disdain for him, having learned early on to not make eye contact, or else he'd incite some form of retaliation from anyone within a hundred yard radius. He quickened his pace to the training ground he was heading to, civilians weren't allowed on the shinobi's turf, so at least he'd be safe from them over there. Of course, it was natural that he would have had a few runs in with some angry shinobi every once in a while, but the most they did was send him packing from the training grounds with some harsh words. He approached the training ground with a mental sigh of relief. He was finally in the safe zone, somewhere he could kick back and relax. Except he wasn't gonna kick back and relax, he was gonna train. Well, he was gonna try. The reason he could only try and not do was simply because no one had taught him. He couldn't really try and learn on his own because he never had the proper material at his disposal, and he couldn't obtain them through stores with him being the pariah of the village. This meant that as the scorn of the village he was constantly thrown out stores for simply being in there, and the instructors at the academy regularly sneered at him for even approaching them, so that was a no-go well, everyone except Iruka sensei and Mizuki sensei. But the two aforementioned never had time because they were always grading papers and busy with some other teacher stuff. That's why his training regimen was usually taken from other shinobi he was able to observe on the rare occasion that he wasn't found out by them. Today, Naruto was gonna be following his own regimen, and another that he observed from a rather happy fellow. Naruto scrunched his face up as he tried remembering the man in the green spandex suits regimen for the umpteenth time. Oh yeah. I remember Naruto yelled emphatically as he set to run a hundred laps. And that was only the warm-up. Naruto huffed and puffed as he ended his last lap. Son of a gun, that was pretty tiring. Ugh I guess this is the price of becoming Hokage. He quickly stood up and stretched before going to the decently sized stream, drinking some water from his cupped hands and washing his face as he relished in the revitalizing feeling. Feeling somewhat refreshed, Naruto set about to do the next part of the workout before he suddenly froze. What did he do next again? Scrunching his face in concentration, Naruto struggled to recall the exact workout. His eyes panned across the training ground hoping for some kind of memory spark. When his eyes fell on some boulders he yelped in triumph. Oh yeah, now I remember. Man, am I getting super smarter what then he realized the details of the workout's next step. Oh damn it all. He walked to the area with boulders littering the ground with great resignation. The green clad man with the caterpillars above his eyes must be batshit crazy to do this. After dreadfully reaching his destination he stared at the rocks with a somewhat blank look on his face. Yes I gotta do this if I wanna be Hokage someday. Fuck me sideways, he groaned as he lifted a boulder with his arms. Once there, he threw it in the sky, and positioned himself to be as ready as he could. Naruto was lying down face up with his chest panting from the brutal workout he just endured. 
Thank Kami my stamina is fucking awesome. I barely finished that madman's workout. I don't know how that guy can move like a damn snake while I move at the pace of a damn turtle. Needless to say, walking laps around the training ground using only your hands was a tough workout, especially with a pretty giant ass boulder balanced on your feet. Well it wasn't giant, but hey, a big ass rock on your feet that weighed nearly 50 pounds was pretty impressive, though Naruto saw the caterpillar man doing it with a boulder as big as a rhino. But well, one day I'll get there I mean that guy must be strong if he can do that crazy exercise. Suddenly, Naruto was put on alert mode as he heard footsteps approaching his location. He tried jumping to his feet only to fall down from the sudden head rush and muscle fatigue. He cursed himself for being in such a vulnerable position. Fucking shit, I shouldn't have. Naruto, is it you? Came a very familiar voice. The tension immediately dissipated from Naruto's body as he identified the source of the intruder. Holy crap, Mizuki sensei. Thank Kami, it's just you. I thought you were someone who was gonna earn, what are you doing here? Mizuki chuckled and feigned innocence. Oh, I was just looking for you, actually. I've seen you train really hard, and I have to say, I'm so impressed. In fact I was wondering if you wanted to graduate a couple of years early. Naruto's eyes widened at Mizuki's words. What? Are you serious, sensei? He asked excitedly. Mizuki nodded with pseudo sincerity. Why yes, I am Naruto. Now, let me tell you what you have to do to pass. Internally, Mizuki was sneering. Time for you to get what's coming to you, you damn demon. Naruto panted heavily against a tree as he clutched the giant scroll close to his chest, before he peered around the forested area to make sure no one had followed him. Seeing no one he slid down against the tree, and plopped onto his rear. He took a deep breath, and relaxed, allowing a proud smile to adorn his face. He, Uzumaki Naruto, socially proclaimed dope, had successfully stolen the scroll of seals from the Hokage Tower itself. Ha! No one can call me the dead last anymore. I'd like to see them try, and do what I just did. Naruto adjusted his goggles from his forehead to his neck, and wiped the sweat that accumulated on his visage. He eagerly opened the scroll, and peered at the list of. Mizuki sensei told me I only had to learn one of these to graduate early, should be easy enough, I think, he muttered to himself as he scanned the parchment. His gaze fell on one in particular, the cage bunch in no jutsu. This allows the user to summon physical copies of themselves, however, the clone takes a lot of Naruto frowned, the next few words were blurred, and had holes through them from old age. Ah, what the hell does it say? I can't see, damn it. Naruto squinted his eyes in hopes of making out any distinct words on the blurred out characters. Damn. Whatever, where was I ah? However, the user has many benefits from this. It can perform various on its own, and on top of this, it can retain. Naruto swore loudly. Bah. Fuck this boring horseshit. Nobody has time for all that. I'm just gonna learn it. X one hour later X. Wow, that was actually pretty easy, what the hell. How come this one is so much easier than that damn regular bunch Naruto pondered briefly before shrugging. Oh well, maybe there's another I can learn while I wait for Mizuki. Naruto, what the hell are you doing? A shout from Aruka interrupted him. When Naruto turned his head toward his sensei he saw that he stood behind him with a somewhat disappointed face, although the blonde easily ignored the expression. Naruto's visage immediately brightened upon recognizing the voice. He jumped to his feet and turned around. Aruka sensei. Oh man, I'm so glad you came early. I'm totally pumped to show you the new Naruto that I learned. It was actually really easy, I got it down in nearly half an hour, Naruto continued babbling on. Naruto. Uruka grew a tick mark on his head. But I thought about how. Naruto. W what? Naruto stammered out in panic fear. Uruka took Naruto by the shoulders. Naruto, this is serious. I need to know why you took the scroll. The blonde looked confused. For the test, sensei. Mizuki sensei told me that if I was able to take the scroll from Jiji's place and learn it, I'd be able to graduate as an early genin. Immediately piecing the puzzles together, Uruka's expression darkened as understanding emerged on his face. In a small voice, Naruto asked, Uruka sensei am I in trouble? The scarred chunin's gaze softened. No Naruto. You didn't do anything but listen to what your sensei told you to do. Suddenly, Naruto threw up a frantic finger behind him, and screamed. Watch out, Uruka sensei. Too late. Thud. Uruka's eyes widened with momentary surprise before pain took over his mind as his back was penetrated by a shuriken. The scar teacher gritted his teeth as he tried to rip the big hunk of metal from his flesh. Well, well, well what do we have here? Came an incredibly condescending tone. Immediately, Iruka turned around, albeit painfully, and confronted the source of the voice. Mizuki the injured snarled. What the hell do you think you're doing, you giant dipfic? Naruto screamed while pointing an accusing finger at the light-haired. Seeing the blonde, Mizuki sneered with obvious disdain. Shut up, you fool. You honestly thought you of all people would have been given an earlier chance than someone like Ichiha Sasuke, the actual genius of the class. The confused Naruto asked in a somewhat subdued voice, B but you said realization dawned in Naruto's eyes as he puzzled the pieces together. He used me. Anger bubbled up in Naruto's chest. You piece of shit. I'm gonna kill you. He screamed. 
Instead of taking offense, Mizuki simply laughed hilariously. Ha. You, kill me. And how in the world is the dead last demon of his class going to accomplish that? Before Naruto could respond, Iruka growled. Don't call him that, you traitor. You have no right to say anything. He turned to Naruto, and said, I need you to run, and get some backup for me, alright. Naruto nodded dumbly, and took off the scroll tucked to his chest with both arms. Iruka then turned his glare to his childhood friend. Mizuki, how could you? Why would you stoop so low? Why the fuck are you protecting that demon? Mizuki sneered. Did you forget that it also killed your parents join me, and together we can kill the demon, and erase his existence from? Iruka was already shaking his head. No, you're wrong. He's not a demon he's Naruto Uzumaki. Iruka snarled as he wrenched the implanted piece of metal from his back. He then threw the shuriken back at the pale-haired. Mizuki jumped onto a tree, and latched onto it with chakra. He smirked haughtily. Face it, Iruka, you were never a match for me to begin with, and on top of that, you're injured. It's over. Iruka clenched his hands, and gritted his teeth. Even he knew it was mostly true. But I still have to try. With that thought, he brought a kunai out, and took a defensive stance. He had to try, and buy Naruto as much time as he could. X. Naruto paused halfway through his run, and slapped himself for his stupidity. What the hell was he doing? He has the cage bunch in for Kami's sake. He quickly formed the seal he had recently become acquainted with, and three clones were formed. Go directly to Hokage Jiji, and tell him about the situation. The original Naruto ordered. It felt a little weird talking to his clones, but he'd have to get used to it. When the clones nodded in affirmation, the original Naruto turned back the way he came from with a look of determination. I won't let anything happen to Aruka-sensei. No no, no. Naruto frantically thought as he looked at the lifeless form in front of him. How could this have happened it wasn't supposed to happen this way. Damn it. Naruto curses tears ran down his face. He fell to his knees, and pounded at the ground in depressing frustration, and sobbed hysterically until he heard a sneering voice. What's wrong, demon boy? Does it feel bad to see your loved ones die at the hand of the demon? Now you know how everyone in Kanoha feel. Shut up, Naruto growled. Mizuki laughed mockingly. Or what? Are you gonna? Mizuki froze with fear. This sensation hadn't been felt for nearly a decade, but he would, and could never forget it. Even if he wanted to. The pale haired broke out in cold sweat at the presence of the ferocious pressure exuding from the blonde boy in front of him, when thought dominated his mind. The Kayubi no Kitsune, a man with half his face covered in bandage wrapping, approached the tower accompanied by two others. Shimura Danzo, previously a candidate for the Hokage position, an ex-teammate of the current Hokage in office, was now an elder for Kanahagakur. With his two fellow elders and former teammates alongside him, he headed to the office of one Sirotobi Hirzen. Kaharu and Himura, the two that accompanied him, had a stern look on their wrinkly faces. While it wasn't obvious from a first glance, their walk was full of tension, and their strides carried a sense of urgency. Today was the last day to take action. Upon reaching the office door the three elders ignored the protesting secretary, and barged in. Erzin turned an impassive gaze to the three who had intruded. He knew the reason as to why they had come. Their motives had been a pressing thought in his mind for the past few weeks. Ever since the elders, and he had caught wind of dissension amongst a particular wielding clan, they engaged in a heavy discussion on how their next course of action should be taken. Being the peace-loving senile he was, the Sandane wanted to handle the situation diplomatically, hoping somehow that words would be able to defuse the issue. However, Danzo, and the other elders came today, and demanded justice, no matter how brittle the method was. Gerzen, the time is near, and you promised us an answer. We must not waste time any longer. Their traitorous act show. From the corner of his eyes, he saw a mop of blonde hair shrouded in a transparent red cloak in the all-seeing crystal bowl. The elders yelled in surprise when their ex-teammate ran out the door completely ignoring them. Ex, Sir Toby Hirzen, Sandain Hokage of Kanahagakur, had witnessed many dark moments in his life. He has seen families torn apart, the deaths of loved ones, comrades, and fellow shinobi, and was one of the few that saw the unfortunate brutality of all three great shinobi wars. But none could prepare him for the scene before him. In front of him lay the savagely torn remains of the traitorous Mizuki. Not a single shred of skin was left intact. Tissues, muscles, and shattered bones were all strewn apart on the forest ground. Blood coated the once normally green grass red, and a heavy trail of blood led to two forms on the ground. Naruto was on his knees rocking back, and forth clutching Iruka's head to his chest, all the while sobbing with unrestrained sorrow. A solemn expression took hold of the Sandame's face as he approached Naruto before gently placing a hand on the young Jinchuriki's shoulder, making the grieving boy lift his face to meet his village leader's eyes. Immediately, the Hokage knelt, and the young blonde immediately clutched onto his robes desperately. Naruto tried reining in the turbulent emotion that coursed through him, as the Hokage stood in front of him but failed miserably. He dreadfully dabbed at his face with his blood-coated sleeve, trying to halt the liquid that manifested from his eyes. I'm sorry, Gigi I don't know what he kept calling me a demon he killed Aruka-sensei it was just so hectic. One moment I see red, and then next, Mizuki is dead. Here's an interrupted the young boy's babbling. 
Naruto-kun, all of this was out of your control. You aren't at fault for anything, do you understand? He said sternly yet gently. Naruto shook his head despairingly. I should have asked said no he asked me to do this. Here's an interrupted the young boy again, but the blonde continued in a whisper. Why, Gigi what did I do to deserve this? What did I do to deserve everyone's hate? He looked up to the Sandame's face, and gazed with teary eyes. I'm tired of not knowing, Gigi I got Aruka Sensei K killed because I was stupid and weak. Sandame took his shoulders, and spoke in a firm yet warm voice. Naruto-kun, believe me when I say this was not your fault. As to your request we'll discuss that later. Now sleep, my child, you don't need to worry. I'm here for you. Naruto nodded, knowing that was the best he was gonna get out of the leader, and felt his eyelids grow heavy. One last thought rang through his mind before he entered the blissful void of sleep. I'll fix myself to be the best, Uruka sensei that's the promise of a lifetime. Naruto sat in a chair in front of the Hokage's desk, and swung his feet in a bored childlike fashion. Hey, when does he or she get here? I wanna start training. Suratobi hears and pinched the bridge of his nose in obvious agitation. It had been a whole two weeks since the Mizuki incident, and he had kept Naruto with him in case of a mental breakdown, making sure that he'd be there for his surrogate grandson. Yet it seemed as if he didn't need to worry because the boy was nearly back to normal. Hiruzen observed Naruto's every action from the beginning, and all of the signs pointed to the theory that Naruto didn't remember killing Mizuki in his chaotic frenzy. However, that was why the Hokage was a bit irritated. The problem was that Naruto was now obsessed with training because Kami knows why, and the little blonde wouldn't stop bugging the old man about it. Hiruzen simply shook his head. Naruto-kun, there was no guarantee that the person we were talking about would show up today, and besides, you know that the person is busy. How about you go home for today, and come back tomorrow? Naruto's shoulders slumped at the thought of waiting another day. He plopped onto his two feet, and replied in a grumpy tone. Fine. He thought about what he should do. The academy was on a summer break so he literally had nothing to do. He could always pull some pranks, but he didn't feel like it due to all the recent events. Erzin exerted a tired breath as he watched the little blonde exit the office, and went back to previous thoughts. The problem that was rising from a particular clan did not bode well for him or Kanoha, and he was sure the elders were going to come back sooner or later. He grimaced as he paged his secretary. Mayu chan please set up a meeting between the elders and I ASAP. Yes, Hokage-sama. Both Naruto and Harazan had forgotten what day tomorrow was. October 10th, the day that the Kyubi no Kitsun attacked. It was also Naruto's birthday. Fuck. Fuck. Naruto cursed himself for being such an idiot. How did he forget today? Of all people, how could he forget? Naruto stumbled to the ground as the pain in his leg finally caught up to him. I guess the adrenaline wore off now he grimly realized. He shakily got up to his feet only to fall again. Damn it. He cursed. He looked over from the direction he came from, and saw the mob generalizing towards his direction loosely. Naruto chuckled darkly when he heard them scream out the usual bullshit. Find the demon. He went this way. Don't let the bastard escape. Make him pay. If he had received a single Ryo for all those phrases he had just heard, he'd have enough to buy out the entire elemental nations, and then some. It was so fucking cliche, and he heard it a shit ton of times more on this specific day than any other. October 10th. Yep, it was an absolutely great day for a birthday. Naruto gritted his teeth in pain as he once again attempted to stand up. He had to get away now, otherwise the mob would catch him again. Footsteps pounded towards Naruto's general direction as he hobbled along desperately. Taking a glance back while moving, he failed to notice the figure right in front of him. Gotcha, you little bastard. Naruto yelled in agony as a second kunai implanted itself into his calf. Surrounding him were mostly civilians, and very few shinobi. Now that he effectively couldn't run they had him cornered. Knowing this, Naruto simply curled up in the fetus position, and closed his eyes. He tried protecting himself as best as he could by using his hands to cover his face, the seemingly primary target for the mob's punches and kicks. Suddenly, all of the attacks ceased, and he felt himself being taken hold of by the arms and legs. Trembling and shaking, Naruto fearfully opened his eyes to see himself being taken by the shinobi outside the village walls. He strained and pulled with all of his effort to try and free himself, but it was for naught. How the hell was a 9 well, 10 year old supposed to free himself from some battle hardened shinobi? Please someone anyone, he cried, and whimpered for someone to save him, but it all went unanswered. If it weren't for the seriousness of the situation, he would have noticed that this was the first time he had been taken outside of the village walls. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I did. I'll stop, just please let me go. Naruto begged. As an answer, one of the shinobi who was carrying him, punched him square in the stomach, involuntarily forcing blood to cough out. Oh, don't worry, we won't kill you just yet. No, that would be showing you mercy. We're gonna make sure you suffer for years, and years to come. One of the shinobis spoke in a low voice. The group of five shinobi then reached the forestry that surrounded the village, and quickly entered the somewhat dense foliage. Without warning, Naruto was thrown, and pinned against a very large oak tree. 
the unmistakable sound of metal piercing skin resounded in the air, followed by a loud scream of pain that broke with sobbing. The shinobi stepped back and admired their grotesque work. Before them, the boy they believed to be the actual Kayubi no Kitsune was crucified to the tree. Kunai implanted his wrists and ankles, preventing movement, and caused Naruto to continue crying helplessly, while desperately apologizing for crimes he didn't commit. A shinobi with an eye patch over his left eye stepped forward. Seeing how the other shinobi made a path for him, Naruto assumed he was the leader, and looked at him with tears streaming down in torrents. Speaking in a light tone that didn't fit the situation, the man spoke with a wide smile. Nine years ago I lost part of my life. Nearly everything was taken from me, my family, my friends, my wife, and even my children. His demeanor took a 180 as he slapped Naruto in the face without warning, causing the blonde to cry out in pain. In a low and angry voice, the one-eyed man said, and as if that wasn't bad enough, you just had to take my fucking eye. Upon saying this, he lifted his eye patch and revealed a rotting eye socket. Naruto felt his stomach content rising to his throat as he quickly averted his eyes downward. In the end, Naruto willed the stomach content down through sheer willpower. Please I won't say anything if you let me go, Naruto whispered, face still stinging from the man's sudden blow to him earlier. He would have begged, but he was quickly losing energy. He was only hoping his words would placate the man. Instead of answering his question, the man drew a kunai and twirled it around his finger. Gazing at the weapon as it glinted against the moonlight he spoke slowly. You know it really sucks having only one eye. He directed his attention to Naruto and lit the young blonde in the eyes with a dangerous look. Do you know where my eye is? He asked as he tilted his head with a maniacal smile on his face. Naruto shook his head slowly in fear, not trusting the words he'd let out. He didn't want to risk his answer angering the obviously deranged man. Oh, now that's a real bummer. The man frowned and looked crestfallen. His shoulders slumped, and the kunai he was twirling around fell to a standstill as he looked down in a defeated manner. For a few seconds Naruto almost believed that he had somehow calmed the crazy man from many extreme actions. Almost. The man abruptly stood tall with a cheery smile on his face. Well, you know how that saying goes, eye for an eye. With that being said, the man smiled and approached Naruto with malicious intent. The mention of Naruto's name on this particular day made the Sandame Hokage pale with unease. They had just got done going over the report of the incident, and Itachi had one last request before he was marked as a Nukunin. Hiruzen had smiled sadly when he heard this. One of the few people Naruto had bonded with was now leaving all because of himself and the council. Itachi's last request was to visit the blonde he had bonded with over the last year and a half before he left. That's when the weight of the current date decided to firmly stomp its way into his mind. That led to the both of them quickly striding over to the desk to use the crystal ball to locate him. Once they looked through the crystal ball to find Naruto, much to their horror, they saw a group of ninja carrying him into the outer forest of Konoha. Immediately, the Hokage cursed himself for being such a fool. He knew what day it was, yet somehow, nearly every year around the same time, something always occupied him. It was not a coincidence, he theorized, that the civilian council and majority of the shinobis were behind this somehow. He just couldn't find any damnable evidence. Itachi and the Sandame used the Shunshin no Jutsu immediately to the front gates of the village. Recognizing that they were still in the immediate forest of Konoha, Itachi and Hiruzen had decided to split up to find the boy. Although this was their home village, the forest was just simply too damn big for them to automatically know where everything was by heart. Itachi, if you find Naruto, bring him back immediately to the tower. If you find those responsible you know what to do. However, you know you must immediately leave as soon as possible. The village will find out about what you did soon enough. Sandame spoke swiftly without remorse, and only with absolute authority. It was the man known as the Professor, and the Hokage speaking, not the loving grandfatherly figure to the people of Konoha. Yes, Hokage-sama. Itachi instantly replied before running off to the east side of the forest. Suratobi really wished at this moment that he could call on his, and Anbu, but he needed to keep everything discreet, if he were to grant Itachi's last request. With these thoughts, the Sandame shot off in the opposite direction from Itachi. Cage bunch no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu. Itachi whispered. Summoning three cage bunchins took a solid amount of chakra from Itachi, hence the reason he didn't create a lot more. It would be useless to summon 30 clones only to dispel them after 30 seconds or a minute. No, it would be more efficient to summon a few, and have them be able to use a decent amount of chakra to help them find the young blonde. Immediately, they sped off in random directions in hopes of completing their tasks as quickly as possible. Itachi picked a direction where his cage bunchins hadn't gone to, and sent chakra to his ears in hopes for a sign to the whereabouts of Naruto. He immediately heard some rustling, and pumped chakra through his legs to the source of noise. He ran, and ran in hopes of finding, TSK. Itachi stared at the cause of the noise with a frown. Just a squirrel. If he didn't find the boy soon, he was sure the blonde would be severely injured or dead by the time they got to him. Itachi checked his reserves, and seeing that he had about two-thirds of it left, he summoned another set of three cage bunchins, and sent them off in random directions. He was getting desperate in finding the boy. 
He didn't know why, but the blonde provided the companionship and feelings of a real little brother. Sasuke was more of a one rival from the Hyuga clan that only saw him as a motivational piece, and that was it. Every other shinobi held him in a rare reverence that stemmed from him being a young and accomplished shinobi that happened to be an Ichiha. But Naruto was different. Naruto treated him normally and didn't see him as a genius, but as simply Itachi. It was foolish for him to have developed a familial bond with the boy because he knew one day he had to eventually sever the bond. He knew this when he told the Hokage about the uprising in the Ichiha clan, but the little kid was a sphere of energy that had a gravitational pull about him once you got to know him. Itachi sighed. Not to quote the Nara clan, but it was quite troublesome. Again picking a different path from those of his clones, he quickly ran and pumped chakra through his legs once again. He ran up a tree and started taking the hired. Hopping from branch to branch, he brought in his senses too. Suddenly, an agonized scream pierced the moonlit night. Itachi froze. Anger bubbling up in his core, Itachi activated the recently obtained Manjiku Shuringen subconsciously and flared his killing intent. With inhumane speed, Itachi silently blurred through the thickets. More people were going to die tonight. Half a second. That's all Naruto had before his senses kicked and realized there was an 8-inch kunai in his eye. His first sensation was just a sense of intrusion being cold. Then it became hot. Extremely hot. Excruciating pain flared in his damaged orbital. Blood and serous fluid gushed out from his socket in an unrestrained torrent, quickly coating the right side of his face with blood. Naruto's scream filled the night with agony, only to be cut off by the blood leaking into his esophagus. Spluttering and sobbing, Naruto spat out blood as he tried screaming out in pain, speaking even, yet it was to no avail, as the pain overrode his urge to emit any form of decibel. For reasons unknown, the grunts of the shinobi group came forward and ripped the kunai out viciously from the boy's limbs and let the demon container drop to the floor like a heap of trash. Naruto immediately took to the fetal position and whimpered uncontrollably. At the sight of this, the shinobis roared with laughter and continued jaunting at the Jinchuriki's expense. Everyone encircled the boy and took turns spitting and kicking at the demon boy. Suddenly, everyone froze as they felt as though a very dangerous predator was in the vicinity. Killer intent took a hold of everyone like a giant wave had just crashed upon them. After a few moments of fear-induced stupor, the heinous group of shinobis looked around desperately trying to pinpoint the source of terror. No one made a sound except for the still whimpering Naruto. You have all made a grave mistake Katen. Ryuka no Jutsu, fire release. Bracing fire. The voice whispered. Suddenly, a figure jumped up into the night sky with his silhouette against the bright translucent moon. A pair of Shuringen activated eyes stared boreholes into everyone's gaze, as fire split into five directions, each toward their own target. Rapidly approaching them, the shinobis emptied their bladders as they knew it was too late to survive. Screams of fear filled the forest before being silenced by their fate. Itachi quickly dispelled his cage bunchens that were still searching, and did a quick scan of his surroundings, ensuring that no more danger was present. After confirming that there was indeed no more danger present, Itachi approached the near-dead boy he came to know as a younger brother. Anger bubbled once again in Itachi's core as he realized what they did to the young boy. Kneeling down to the sun-kissed blonde, he began healing the small wounds. He had a basic proficiency in medical ninjutsu due to his Shuringen. However, it was only basic he wished now more than ever that he should have given more attention to it. The late Naruto managed out with his good eye closed. He cracked a small smile, Team Nai-san. Itachi shook his head incredulously. You must be strong to make light of this horrendous situation Naruto. Don't talk to Naruto, save your energy you're going to need it. Taking the boy's silence as an answer, he continued to patch the minor injuries. To heal the Jinchuriki's broken bone was out of Itachi's medical ninjutsu's league, the basic healing would have to be done for now. Completing his simple healing process, Itachi then bit his thumb, Kuchiyu's snow jutsu. The cloud poofed and revealed a slightly larger than average crow. Why did you summon me, Itachi-san? Asked the crow in a surprisingly deep bear tone. The crow looked around his surroundings before looking at the boy with a kunai embedded in one of his eye sockets. The crow's reaction looked disgusted. Humans were the most barbaric organisms to walk this forsaken world. Kuro-san, I need you to find and relay a message to the Hokage. He should be easy enough to find if you search for his signature from the sky. The older Chiha answered. Kuro, the crow summon, simply not it is affirmative. And what does this message entail? Please inform the Hokage that I have found Naruto and he'll be arriving shortly. Please also inform him that Itachi leaned in and whispered something to the crow. The crow's eyes widened with surprise. Are you sure you want to do that? The repercussions could be severe, you especially don't know how that process could react. Especially because of a certain being that is held. No, I don't think you should go through with this, it'd be painful for the boy on, and top of that, we would be uncertain in knowing if it would work though. I have made my decision, it must be done. Itachi interrupted with a stern voice. He had already put a great amount of thought behind this. The crow looked apprehensive but eventually nodded. Itachi was one of the strongest shinobi this world had to offer. Kuro would trust in the genius of the Ichiha clan. 
Itachi turned to the still form of one Uzumaki Naruto, he knelt down, and called out softly, Naruto. Itachi grew worried as the boy with his good eye closed didn't respond. Just as he was about to act, the boy moved his hand to his cheek, almost touching the kunai that had been forcefully implanted into his socket. He held his hand there on the verge of making contact with the weapon, before finally dropping his hand on his cheek. It hurts. Naruto whispered hoarsely, voice trembling full of pain. I know I know. But I need you to be brave for me, okay? Can you do that for me? At Naruto's weak nod, Itachi continued, the kunai ruptured everything in your eye, if I were to take it out, you would be blind in that one eye. I figured as much as Naruto said quietly with tight lips. However, if you choose to do so, I can replace it, but the process itself would hold an untold amount of pie. No? I won't take your eye just so I can see Itachi nai. I'd rather go blind than hurt someone I love. Naruto spoke loudly with ferocity. Screw that. He wasn't a sissy bitch. Itachi gave an amused smile, not that Naruto could see, always thinking about others Naruto can sometimes it's good to be selfish. Naruto managed a small pain smile, hell yeah, I'm always thinking about others heroes always think about others, and they get all the ladies he chuckled weakly, just kidding brooders like the team always gets em, which is complete bullshit by the way. Itachi again looked at the boy with slight awe, just how do you do it Naruto? Always remaining strong, and steadfast, I wouldn't be using my eyes so you don't have to be worried, oh gross Itachi nai. I'm not gonna use one of those bastards eyes. They just assaulted me so screw them, and they're shitty. Not theirs either. Itachi said quickly, placating the boy into silence. Naruto remained silent before speaking slowly, if it's not yours, and if it's not theirs then whose? Itachi pulled out a vial that contained a pair of eyes, and briefly thought back to the conversation he had with the Sandain Hokage. Flashback starts, Sir Toby sat silently in his office contemplating his recent decision. Did he really make the right choice? Would his predecessors have condoned his decision or would they have chastised him? Unfortunately, he would never find out. Regardless of his decision, he couldn't fight off the intrusion of guilt that had seeped into his soul. Hokage Sama. An emotionless voice came. Despite the monotonous tone of the speaker's voice, Saratobi hears and knew there was an emotional turmoil warring inside the young man. He knew what he had forced on the young adult was an unbearable weight that could never be fully alleviated. Saratobi clenched his jaw as he spoke with guilt and sorrow riddling his voice. He avoided eye contact with the genius, I am truly, and sincerely sorry, I wish it had never came to this. I will do whatever it is to keep this village safe, Hokage-sama. I nearly regret nothing, however I would like to tell you I had failed in one aspect. Saratobi gave a sad smile, I would have never expected you to kill your own, even though I know that you're not the perfect ninja now I have to ask. Did you perform the Tsukiyomi on young Sasuke-kun, and were you able to obtain the Manjiku Shuringen? Itachi shook his head, I simply knocked my little brother out, I didn't see a reason to put him through such torture, the incident tonight should be well enough to motivate him to be stronger, Itachi's fist clenched ever so slightly, this did not go unnoticed by Saratobi as Itachi continued, and I was successful in killing S. Shisui Chiha successfully obtaining the Manjiku Shuringen without using his eyes however, I would like to take them as keepsake Hokage Sama, if you don't mind that is, Saratobi understood immediately, the bond between the two Chihas was akin to brotherhood. It forged upon being the talented, and young prodigies always together during countless life-threatening missions, and perilous situations. Sir Toby waved the Chiha's hesitation off. It's fine Itachi-kun, it's the least I could do for you, especially after all you've done for us. Itachi then cleared his throat somewhat awkwardly, actually Hokage-sama, there's one more thing I would ask of you, if it was alright with you, I would like to make one more visit to one Uzumaki Naruto. The sand aim froze. The mention of Naruto's name on this particular day made the sand aim Hokage pale with unease. How could I have forgotten? Flashback ends. Don't worry about trivial matters like that. Just answer the question Naruto yes or no. Itachi spoke sternly, despite the quietness of his voice. Naruto took several painful breaths before he gave an answer. Grimacing, he spoke slowly. Well not much of a choice if I want to keep my eyesight I suppose. Naruto tilted his head towards Itachi. This action elicited a giant wince from the young blonde. Naruto held himself still, and let the pain dull out before he asked. As long as it's not your eye, I'm fine with Itachi nai. Itachi allowed himself a small smile as he tried to steal his nerves. He didn't know anything about surgical processes, but he hoped he didn't need to. When he was healing the minor cuts and bruises, he felt the deeper lacerations and broken bones healing on their own. When he focused his attention, he felt a malevolent chakra at work. He suspected it had something to do with the Kyubi no Kitsune. That piece of information alone was what Itachi was basing this whole eye operation on. He was relying on the seemingly miraculous healing prowess of the Kyubi. In the small amount of time since he had since the situation made itself known, he put an impressive amount of thought into his next course of action. In the precious moments he had to think, he ended up deciding that the risk would be worth it. Even if the procedure failed, it would still result in the loss of an eye. And if it succeeded, then Naruto would come out stronger than ever, hopefully to the point where nothing even remotely similar to this situation would ever occur. So if that was the reward from all this, Itachi would have to risk it. 
This would be the last time he'd ever be able to watch out for Naruto for a long, very long time. He just hoped it would pay off. Quickly muttering a quick cage bunch of no jutsu, Itachi ordered his shadow clone to pick up the blonde into a more comfortable position. As soon as that was done, Itachi set the vial that contained Shisui's eyes onto the ground next to the lying flat on his black. Kneeling next to the side of Naruto's face with the kunai stuck in it, he gently tried tugging the kunai out, only to find it stuck. Naruto involuntarily let out a yelp of pain at Itachi's action. Despite the Ichiha's good intention, Naruto couldn't help but scowl slightly. Of course, any facial movement that even slightly contracted the muscles around Naruto's right eye, flared a sudden increase in pain. So he yelped again. Man this fucking sucks man from here on out, my luck better multiply into infinity, and beyond cause I am tired of all this bullcrap he thought, as the pain dulled to a more bearable amount. Naruto, I'm gonna have to heat up the kunai with flames slowly, so it doesn't stay lodged in your socket, I'm going to heat it from the handle, so I don't burn the rest of your face in other words, it's gonna hurt like a bitch. Naruto finished. Itachi let out a small HN in affirmative. Naruto grimaced once more, well, sooner is always better than later right? Itachi summoned another cage bunch on top of the other one. Ordering them to hold Naruto down, Itachi quickly placed his hands on the handle, and used an extremely simple caten to coat his hands with flames. Naruto gave a loud gulp as he waited for the kunai to heat up. He didn't have to wait long as he felt the metal starting to heat up to the point of it being similar to lukewarm. Naruto's pace of breath quickened from the anxiety of waiting. Despite the brave face he put on, this whole thing was actually quite freaking scary. Naruto didn't know why he expected the pain to be sudden, but he did. Every time he experienced pain, the suffering was always delivered swiftly. Should be the same for this time, right? Kami was wrong. The first sign of his error was the fact he was becoming extremely uncomfortable well as uncomfortable as you could get with the kunai already embedded into your socket. Naruto gritted his teeth as he felt a small degree of burn, can you pull it out now? The short tug that led to more pain answered him, it's not hot enough yet, and I can't go any faster, or I might cauterize the flesh around the wound. That would effectively seal this kunai as a permanent fixture to your face. I'm sorry but bear with me. Itachi murmured. Naruto let out a strained noise indicating pain was building up. He clenched his jaws, and grinded his teeth furiously. His fingers penetrated the ground as he exerted pressure, hoping somehow that grasping at something tightly, would dull the ever-increasing pain. He thrashed against the shadow clone's restraining grip on him to no avail. He cried out desperate pleas for Itachi to stop, to end the suffering. In response, Itachi continued whispering encouragement that fell to deaf ears. Right as the pain reached the apex of Naruto's tolerance, the pain immediately died down to a small ache, eliciting a somewhat relieved gasp from the Is it out? He whispered as he opened his one good eye to see Itachi smile, and nod. Naruto shut his one eye tightly, and bared his teeth as the open air hit his gaping socket. It felt like a brick ton of salt against an open wound. He took in a deep shuddering breath as he adjusted to the strange emptiness, and pain of his eye socket. Now this is the hard part right? Itachi hesitated a bit before answering. Pursing his lips, he spoke unsurely, Naruto I really don't know what is gonna happen, but I believe you should, and can expect pain, and lots of it. I'm going on a whim here as to this final step. Do you still want to continue? When Sapphire I stared at Itachi dully, I had okay no I I am scared I don't think I can H handle this Naruto finally whispered out as tears escaped his eyes freely. Naruto didn't know why he had to be so weak, it should have never turned out this way, if only he had been, you're strong. Came the quiet yet stern voice of the only Chiha present. Naruto shook his head, no I was never strong I couldn't even protect Uruka sensei and I can't even protect myself. Itachi lifted his hand briefly, and flicked the whiskered boy on the forehead. Don't be baka. You are stronger than you'll ever know, trust me. Hearing those words brought a strange effect in Naruto. He still felt all the negative emotions, but the words of his older brother, instilled a new sense of security in him. If a genius amongst genius saw something in him, perhaps he himself can one day see it. Thank you Nai-san Naruto whispered. He looked up towards the night sky, and continued, I think I'm ready. Itachi patted the boy's head before giving a grim nod, let us begin. X. Naruto had thought he had known pain to an intimate level. Well Sally fucked that notion sideways, and tossed it in the trash. Cause what he felt at this moment, that was painful. He tried screaming, but he found his throat parched, and was barely able to whimper. He tried thrashing against the cage bunchins that were restraining him. He tugged and kicked, but it was to no avail as he felt his world explode with pain. Yet underneath all that pain he felt something incredibly difficult to describe he felt something different. As vague as that was, it was the truth. Yet if he had to describe the strange sensation, he would have to say, evil. However thank Kami the feeling Naruto had felt lasted for a few seconds, seeing as to how he passed out from the pain. Again, thank Kami. Where am I? Why does my head feel like it's been hit with a few shuriken? I wonder if Nai-san is still here. Itachi Nai. Hearing no response, Naruto groggily awoke to an all too familiar place, albeit blurry, he knew exactly where he was. The familiarity of the place assaulted his sensitive senses, the clean antibacterial scent attacked his already sensitive nose. 
the whiteness of the room, and the texture of his clothing which felt much like a gown, were dead giveaways as to where he could be. Yeah, he knew exactly where he was. The place that he hated waking up to. Kanohe's hospital. That or he was at some crazy OCD freak's house with an extreme hospital fetish. Naruto groaned as he tried moving. His body felt like complete crap, everything fucking hurt, and he was sore as hell. What the hell caused this? Last thing he remembered was, the memories hit him like a tidal wave. Naruto closed his eyes, and took a deep breath. He opened his eyes, and realized that his vision was supplied only from the left side. From his other optical perspective he simply saw pitch black. I guess it didn't work. Naruto spoke softly to no one in particular. With great difficulty, Naruto sat up straight with a severe wince, and groaned, fucking shit. That hurt like a, now Naruto-kan, do I need to wash your mouth out with soap? Came a somewhat amused voice. Naruto looked up to see the one, and only Sandame Hokage standing in the doorway. Although he spoke with an amused tone, his visage was dead serious. Averting his gaze, Naruto murmured dejectedly, Hey Gigi, how are you feeling about Naruto-kun? Like shit. Sandame let out a mirthless chuckle as he approached the bed Naruto was sleeping on. Rolling a wheelchair closer so he could sit, and converse more easily, this talk wouldn't be easy, Sandame sighed. I guess that's a given after what had happened last night Sandame rubbed his chin in a thoughtful manner. Where's Nai San Naruto caught himself quickly, Itachi. Sir Toby frowned, why didn't the Chiha prodigy tell him Sir Toby hesitantly spoke, Naruto Itachi betrayed Kanoha. Naruto frowned, haha Jiji, I'm not really in the mood for jokes, so can you seriously tell me where he's at? Or send him here. Naruto I'm sorry but I'm being completely serious when I say he massacred the Chiha clan last night. Naruto stared at the Sandame desperately looking for any signs of a joke, but he only found regret and sorrow on the face of the man he saw as grandfather. Naruto then looked forward with his one eye. His gaze took in everything yet he saw nothing. The sapphire colored eye dulled, much like a gemstone covered in sheets of dust. His thoughts ran a million miles per second. How could he do this to Kanoha? Why would he do that to his family? Why would Itachi leave him? That had hurt the most. He knew they bonded like a little brother would with an older brother. Didn't Itachi know he was one of his most precious people? Naruto only had him, and the Jiji. He had to have known, Naruto had told him a million times. Tears started to fall out as Naruto clenched at his heart, desperate to placate the heartbreaking ache. His chest shuddered with short and uncontrolled breathing. Naruto glanced at the Sandame, and suddenly felt angry. He clenched his jaws, and tightened his fist, why is this shit always happening to me? It's not fair. Frustrated tears started to stream out of his open eye. How come the supposed leader of our village fails so miserably at preventing pain? Are you alright with Naruto-kun? Came the worried voice of Sandane. Fucking fantastic Gigi. This year had been so fucking lutely amazing. Couldn't you tell? He spat out venomously. The Sandane placed a gentle hand on Naruto's. I'm sorry Naruto, just know that in time, everything will be better. Shoving the old man's hand away forcefully, Naruto spoke coldly. Don't touch me. Sir Toby smiled sadly. The boy was in the right to feel angry. All he could do is be patient and hear the child out. Tell me what's wrong with Naruto-kun. Tell you or you fuck tell you what's wrong. He asked incredulously. He glared at the village leader. What the hell do you mean? Are you seriously that old that you can't even tell what the hell is wrong? Naruto took a forced breath as he closed his eyes. Well let me tell you Hokage-sama he spoke of the formal title with obvious sarcasm before continuing. In this month alone, I have lost nearly half of the people that care for me. The two people that was actually willing to protect me. Naruto-kun, you know I do my best to try and protect you. Bullshit Shiji. And you know it. He pointed a finger to the eye that was destroyed. How the hell did this happen if you tried your best to protect me? You're the freaking Hokage. He gritted his teeth, I want to know why this happens to me. Every year Jiji, this happens to me. I want to know why. Naruto-kun I'm sorry, I can't tell you because it's a classified S-rank secret. Naruto grinded his teeth and let out a frustrated growl. Then when will it be okay? When I get raped. Next year when I die Naruto spat out. Sir Toby took on an aghast look, is this how you truly feel Naruto-kun? I had no idea he must have been holding it in for so long. Naruto-kun, I would never let that happen to you. From here on out, I'll double the Anbu. Naruto scoffed, the fucking Anbu. Are you fucking serious? Where was the Anbu when I was getting my eye carved out? Naruto yelled with angry tears rolling down his face. He was about to continue his angry ventilation when a sudden sleepiness sensation took hold of him. Whatever Hokage-sama, I'm done leave me alone, Naruto muttered as he went to lay back down. He turned his back to him, effectively ignoring the sad face on the wizened old man. Very well Naruto-kun just knows that I love you, and better days will come for you. If Naruto had heard him, he certainly gave no indication that he did. Silence ensued as the Hokage took his leave. X. Sir Toby hears inside as he walked outside into the hallway. Did you hear all of young Naruto-kun's words? Itachi looked at the door of the Jinchurikis, and sighed, briefly thinking over last night's event. Flashback starts. Itachi sighed in relief as the malevolent chakra seemed to be doing proper reconstruction of Naruto's eye. 
as soon as he coaxed, re shoved Shisui's eye into Naruto's bleeding socket, a dark and evil chakra immediately emerged and snaked its way from Naruto's navel area to up his chest and slithered along the neck until it finally went towards his orbital socket. Almost immediately, the burnt skin of Naruto returned to its natural tan hide. Tendrils reconnected themselves along with various muscles and connective tissues. As this was happening, Naruto screamed only to have it turn into a pitiful whimper. Itachi closed his eyes and sent a silent prayer to whatever Kami that was out there to help the boy. To do anything to ease the boy's pain. Itachi's prayer seemed to have been answered as the boy seemed to fall into an unconscious state. Itachi's worry eased a bit, he had thought his circuit brother had died, but the Kyubi's chakra was still at work. However, instead of the chakra only reaching the eye, it had now spread and encased his whole body with the chakra. As soon as Itachi's cage bunchens came in contact with the chakra, their hands corroded a bit before dispelling. Itachi sat down and closed his eyes. Tears streamed out of the prodigy's eyes. It had been such an exhausting past 24 hours. The incident involving his clan had affected him more than he had let on. As much as he'd like to be the perfect shinobi, one without emotion, he just couldn't. How could someone kill their friends, best friends, and their family without feeling such a thing? Itachi was strong, a genius amongst a genius. But he was not a monster. He still felt every emotion torn through him just as any other human. He looked upon the night sky, and spoke to no one in particular, Shisi. I am so sorry for everything. He looked at the boy covered in the Biju's chakra, but know that you will live on through him in a way, he is strong-minded, and strong-willed much like you. His tears stopped as he let out his feelings. It had been way too long since he had shown any emotions. A few minutes later, Itachi sighed once again in relief as the chakra enveloped boy seemed to thin out to the point where it wouldn't be fatal to come in contact with for a few minutes. Itachi knew not to touch the boy, when the vile chakra was so thickly saturating the boy's figure. However, he didn't have much time left, so he had to leave soon. So without a single care in the world, he picked the young boy up, while the chakra aided his clothes and skin, albeit slowly. Itachi gritted his teeth, this pain is nothing compared to Naruto's suffering. He hugged the boy tighter to his chest despite the pain, a lone tear fell into the cheek of the unconscious boy. I'm sorry for everything, flashback ends, the boy is in pain, hopefully time will be able to mend his heart. Itachi wordlessly nodded in agreement with a slight frown on his face, he could practically feel the emotions rolling off from the young Jinchuriki's room. Hokage-sama, why didn't you tell him about his other eye? In all truth, I was going to, but he is emotionally distraught at the moment, and I don't believe being emotionally stable with a Shuringen in your eye is not a very good mix, the old man said honestly. Itachi nodded, the Chiha clan was indeed a bit unstable like that his father, nearly all his uncles and elders were power crazed, and tended to get a bit crazy. Shaking his head from his thoughts, will I be allowed to see him one last time? Sir Toby hesitated before shaking his head, Itachi I'm sorry, but you can't now, I know this isn't how you wanted to leave the village, but for Kanoha's sake, you need to go again, I can't express how sorry I am for making you shoulder this whole ordeal, I knew what consequences my decisions would reap, I am happy to be of use to Hokage-sama. I will be in contact with you soon. Sir Toby watched as the loyal but now Nukunin, missing ninja, bowed before turning to leave. But before Itachi made use of a shunshin, he spoke softly but clearly. Please watch over both Hokage-sama. With that being said, Itachi Uchiha left the place he had called home for his whole entire life. Kanahagakur no Sato would now be nothing but a memory. Naruto felt himself being reeled from his dream into the real world. Eventually, after his little rant with the, he had fallen asleep. Lying down and closing your eyes for an extended period of time would eventually do that to you he supposed. He sighed as he recollected the events that had happened before he childishly ignored the one person who he had considered family. Amni Chan and Tuchi Ajisen were close in terms of bonds, but the Hokage Jiji was his Jiji dammit. He needed to apologize. As if sensing his inner turmoil, several knocks were heard followed by the sound of the door opening announcing someone was coming in. Naruto glanced up with his one good eye and saw the telltale sign of the village leader's robe. Despite his thoughts of making amends with the old man, he childishly pouted and turned his head away immaturely. Hey, before anyone judges, he is a child and he most definitely is immature. And besides, it's tough to forgive someone. The Sandame, seeing that Naruto seemed to have lost most of his previous night's hostility, smiled. How are you feeling about Naruto-kun? Better. An impassive voice came. Mama, Naruto-kun, for much longer are you gonna keep this angry facade up? What? How can you ask me something like that, especially when Naruto began ranting? The Sandame spoke quickly, ahem, you have air there but you're an idiot. When I went through the most out of anyone wait what? Sir Toby simply chuckled before answering, I believe you heard correctly. Are you high out of your mind old man? Sir Toby hears and sweat dropped, Naruto, I am very much serious, and very much sobered, you have two functional eyes. Two functional eyes would mean I can see out of both sides, Jiji Naruto blatantly pointed out. Yes I am well aware of that, but, listen Jiji, I forgive you, but only on the condition that you stop taking drugs. I don't really know what brought you to the point that you needed to start taking drugs, but ow. 
Naruto felt two hands grab him and lift him with surprising ease. Hey, I'm still sore and my head still hurts. Let me down you old Jijibaka. Sir Toby had grown tired of the admonishment of a child, so here he was, taking said child and walking to the bathroom. He plopped him on a chair that he had brought with him. The blonde crossed his arms and huffed as he glared at the Hokage of Kanoha. What kind of fucked up drugs are you taking to make you do all this weird shit Jiji? Shaking his head in exasperation, Saratobi hears and simply pointed at the mirror. The reason you couldn't see out of your other eye is because of that. Naruto scoffed as he turned to look in the mirror. What the hell are you talking about oh? Naruto blinked. Oh? What was the problem? Are you fucking kidding me? Naruto groaned. I am such a complete moronic idiot. Saratobi nodded in agreement. Indeed you are. Naruto sighed as he stared in the mirror, he couldn't believe that this misled him to believe that he didn't have a proper set of eyes. Of course he would see pitch black if there was a shit ton of bandage wrappings around his eye. It was so tightly wrapped around his head it was probably the cause of his damn near migraine. He began unwrapping the gauze. As he continued unwinding the bandage wrapping from his head, he began fumbling with the bandage wrap, due to increased excitement with a hint of anxiousness. It was getting too much for him, will he have some crazy colored eyes? He continued pondering what kind of eye color it could be, hopefully it was anything but black. He didn't want to look anything like Sasuke team. Oh, maybe it'd be a vibrant green like Sakura oh. Or maybe even gold. Yeah, gold would be cool, eh? He had just unfinished trapping the bandage, and leaned forward with anticipation to scrutinize every little detail of change. Except there was no change. Staring back at him was the exact eye that should have been completely decimated from existence, right? Thinking back, he couldn't really remember what became of his eye that night. It was sort of tough, you know. Anyways, back to reality, where nothing was different. He cocked his face to the side, and blinked furiously, Gigi. Is this my eye it looks exactly the same. Sandame found himself chuckling once again, No my boy, that eye belongs to the one, and only Shisuichiha. Do you know of him? The Itachi mentioned him tons of times, something about them being rivals, and brother in arms. Indeed, Shisui along with Itachi were renowned Shuringen users. They were among the best in the Ichiha clan, if not the top two. Nearly every Chiha who had unlocked theirs seemed to have some passive ability unlocked unique to them. Saratobi looked at Naruto's right eye thoughtfully. I wonder if you will possess the Shuringen. Whoa whoa whoa. Wait a second. So Itachi actually killed the whole clan off at the Jiji's nod, Naruto yelled, so why the hell did he give me this eye? Perhaps he saw something in you we may never know, no, Jiji. Does this mean I have a Shuringen? He started off excitedly, but ended up slightly frowning. It certainly doesn't feel like it, and from the looks of it, it feels like my other one. Sandame stared at the boy intently. Hm, I honestly don't know Naruto, your body adapted to it well enough, someone did a remarkable job of patching you up. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. Naruto looked at the mirror intently, what the hell were you thinking Nai-san? Due to the whole incident that involved a certain traitor Sachiha and his clan, Saratobi hears and cancelled the academy classes for a whole month. A whole fucking M-O-N-T-H. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Naruto thought, a tad bit annoyed at the fact that he had nothing to do. He was currently walking in a henge of a nondescript civilian. I guess I can go by train I wonder if the caterpillar guy is out there. He was near the Inizuka compound when he heard a whimper. Naruto stopped for a brief second contemplating whether or not it was worth the trouble to actually sate his curiosity before walking on. He didn't want to really deal with anything. He found that his curiosity often led him to more trouble than any good. Another whimper. Fuuuuk. He groaned as his body moved on its own will toward the pain whimpering. He continued walking around until he reached an area of alleyways. Occasionally pausing, and preening his ears when he entered the maze of alleyways, he took on a satisfied expression when he heard he was getting closer by the second. Dropping his henge in a plume of smoke, he quickened his pace to a run when he heard a pain bark, and several threatening growls. When he rounded a corner, he saw a puppy that was the size of a large adult fist. Surrounding the small dog were several larger dogs bearing their teeth at the obviously injured puppy. The puppy itself had a black fur coat with hints of orange around his body's underside, and paws. Naruto clenched his fists, if there was one thing he hated, it was bullies. Subconsciously letting out Kai, killer intent, Naruto picked up a lead pipe lying on the floor, and roared. However, the lead pipe was not needed, as the dogs cowered at the unintentionally leaked Kai. Naruto stared after the dogs that were bullying the pup for several seconds, before returning his attention to said pup. Naruto tentatively held a hand out to the nearly all-black puppy, only to see it bear his tiny canines at him. Naruto frowned, it was obvious that the puppy wasn't used to any form of help. Naruto's frown became even more pronounced when he noticed how malnourished the pup looked. Wow this puppy reminds me of me. Naruto sadly thought. Naruto brought out a piece of jerky that he had been saving for himself as a treat, and offered it to the young pup while crouching, ever slowly trying to approach the small dog. As he drew closer with the piece of meat, the dog growled and snapped at the drawing hand. Naruto stopped in his tracks and sat. The dog needed some treatment, but without trust, Naruto couldn't get near him. So he waited patiently. 
even if Patience was in his strong suit. And wait he did. A staring contest ensued between both occupants of the alleyway. For what seemed like a century, the two continued staring until the pup finally gave up. A small smile tugged at Naruto's lip as he saw the dog extend its neck toward the jerky that had been placed on the ground, all the while staring at Naruto with suspicion. Suddenly, the dog snapped out and took the piece of jerky, immediately retreating with its back to the wall. The injured pup scarfed the jerky down in a heartbeat. Then it promptly fell over from what seemed to be exhaustion. Naruto sighed in relief as he scooped the young canine into his arms. Now all he had to do was find a place that could take care of the pup. Naruto frowned as he realized that most likely no one would care for anything that had any relation to the blonde. Realizing where he was near, a metaphoric light bulb appeared above his head. Duh. How could I forget? We're near Kiba's place. I think it certainly smells like him Naruto thought as his senses picked up on a somewhat familiar scent. Kiba wasn't exactly his friend, but they got along well enough as classmates. Kiba, Shikamaru, and Chaoji were the few that treated him indifferently. They were the closest things he could call a friend. Kiba laughed boisterously as he chas his little furry companion down. Yep this was the life, getting a pup, and then spending the rest of your days. Kiba halted his game of tags, and looked up sniffing the air. Ha I know that smell if I'm not mistaken, this smells like the dog. Kiba. Came the unmistakable voice of the whiskered boy. Yep, that's definitely Naruto. Kiba smirked. The puzzling thing was that there was another smell that accompanied the pariah. It sort of smelled like a dirty dog. Kiba wrinkled his nose, and narrowed his eyes, he also smelled a bit of blood. His suspicions were confirmed as Naruto came running around the corner painting with a bundle of fur in his arms. Kiba, immediately jumping to conclusions, started screaming accusations at the... If it weren't for the severity of the situation, Naruto would have rolled his eyes. Instead, he ran up to the red mark face tattooed boy, and gave him a good, solid kick between the legs. Kiba's scream changed from accusing screams to a pained one. Naruto winced, no guy should ever have to go through that. Meh, whatever, it had to be done. Well, there were probably some other ways that Naruto could have stopped the incessant rambling of the Inuzuka air, but he didn't really have time. So one kick to the family jewels would have to do. Naruto then explained, listen here you ass. I found this pup being manhandled by some bigger dogs so I went and rescued it, you jerk. At this, Kiba weakly nodded and groaned in pain. Anyways, I don't really know any hospitals or vets near here, so this is probably the best choice. Naruto lied, he was fully aware of the various medical treating establishments, but he knew they didn't like him for some odd reason he himself couldn't depict. So that's why I'm here, this pup needs to be treated, and you are nearby so here we are. Now get up, and treat the pup you wimp. Naruto finished in a somewhat rushed manner, it'd do no good to be caught hanging around here. He didn't know how much of the shinobi populace hated him, but he wasn't willing to find out if the Inuzuka clan shared the hatred. Naruto helped his classmate up, and thrusted the dog into the boy's arms, so I can trust you to handle it right. Kiba nodded, and closely examined the puppy. The puppy was bleeding but it wasn't too severe. If anything, the cause for the unconsciousness might have been a slight infection or malnourishment, possibly both. Upon further observations, Kiba's eyes whitened, oi oi oi. This is a Tibet Mastiff and Grey Wolf hybrid. Naruto. Where the hell did you find this pup? This is super freaking rare Naruto. Kiba looked up to find the sun-kissed blonde gone. Kiba sighed, whatever, I'll just take it to mom. Come on Akimaru, let's get going. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time, till then sayonara.